What's up everyone? Well, we're at it again today and uh, this time we're out here to visit the Bennett Juniper, which is, I'm not sure whether it's the world's largest juniper or just the largest Sierra juniper. But anyway, it's pretty big and it's got some pretty cool stuff. So let's take a look. Well, that is one big tree. And that's all I've been thinking since I saw it. When uh, you said it was the biggest juniper, I was expecting it to be like as tall as that one, right? <laughs> but it's like three times as big. It really is like, I mean, this, I, I wanna say this is the fifth time I've actually been here. And the thing that really sticks in my mind is the, the branching because it's so, uh, it just stands in such stark contrast to the, to the sort of orderly nature of the trunk. So it almost looks like it's a redwood, like it's just got this big formal upright kind of trunk, but then the branching is insane. Yeah. And it's almost like you can't even appreciate it in photos or even in video, but maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll manage to get enough video of it. We can walk around being respectful of the rule that we're not supposed to get near the trunk uh, and get some get some shots of some of the crazy branches from a little bit uh, different angles. I really like these two. I know the guy. So the guy Ken. I think he said it was Fred and Esther. I think the idea is that like, it's a, it's a couple dancing, which actually coincidentally is kind of the way that you want to design, you know, two tree compositions or double trunk compositions in a way, you know, like the two trees looking like they go together like that. So if this were a bonsai, this would be the front because that's where the shari is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why we have to put the shari on the front. Well, I guess that actually applies more to like cultivated trees than collected. Where the bark is still covering the majority of the circumference of the tree. <laughs> The general pattern of Sierras is that the main branches exit the trunk heading somewhat upward. And I think you kind of see that here. But then there are some that kind of exit and twist around in corkscrews, like there's one on this side, um, kind of right there, that exits up there and then twists down into the, the pad that's down below. But it's like a giant corkscrew, whereas most of them are, still have a lot of character, but they're much more straight. Yeah. I actually really like it from this angle. Yeah? Yeah. I don't think there's an angle that I actually dislike. 
that's completely valid. I can't figure out how to, how to communicate the scale and detail of this thing. Because in a way, it's just a giant tree, but then in a way it isn't. Yeah. It's a very giant tree for something that's usually quite small. Yeah. I think this side is the most picturesque though. Like from right about where we're standing because of all those branches on the left. Mm -hmm. I don't know, it feels kind of like 2D at the bottom. I don't know, Pedro, I don't think that's going to be enough wire. That's a shame. But do you really think it needs to be wired? Some of those pads need to be brought down a bit. How do you think it compares to the ones that you saw the other day? Um, the ones I saw the day before yesterday, I would have said that that's probably their natural habit. And now I'm like, what, what, which one is their natural habit? They seem to be doing equally well in both. I think it's adaptability. That's what I tell people sometimes when they're like, aren't you torturing that tree? And I say, well, Unlike animals, plants don't have a predetermined form. They only have a growth pattern that, that adapts to the climate conditions and other plants around them. You ready to go? Yeah. I mean, I could sit and look at it for a couple hours more, but... <laughs> so how important do you think it is to study trees like this for, for your bonsai practice? Um. Like this, for me, personally, uh, not that important. Cool tree nonetheless. Yeah. But I don't think I will ever be styling a tree, anything like that. It doesn't translate well to Scott's pine. <laughs> Actually, it kind of would, but uh, Scott's pine is also not really my passion. All right, well, that was kind of fun. Thanks everyone for watching. We'll see you next time.